Greetings, I'm Jonathan Spirit, I'm Too Formal, and welcome to Age of Engineering Super Shorts. I need more power. From my canola gen, to my water wheels. I get roughly 1064 RF per tick, which is all well and good, but my canola gen doesn't work very well, and I need Age 7 RF Tools Liquid Monitor to fix it. The next best thing? The Immersive Engineering Diesel Generator. The diesel generator requires biodiesel, which you can get from the refinery with plant oil and ethanol. Plant oil comes from the squeezer, from all sorts of seeds, whereas ethanol comes the fermenter, from fruits like melon or sugarcane or apple. One plant common to both of these, melons. Here's my melon farm. I'm going to explain it more in depth, but for now all you need to know is that it uses mechanical miners to break melons. The thing is, I don't exactly like where it is right now, this is not a good place for it, but I do have farms over there, and I'm thinking of using ender chests to transport the melons from the mechanical miners down to my base. So, first things first, I've got to move this thing. This here is a worm. Slap it on a piece of dirt, and it'll wet the ground, till it, and grow crops faster. Here's my first farm. You'll notice that I have another 20 mechanical miners because I already did. So I might as well put them to use because they cost empowered Ristonia crystals each. And this is the full farm setup. Note, the mechanical miners don't require any power, so they're very efficient for simple setups like this. Next, we need to get melons into an ender chest, and that's going to require item conduits. The conduit recipes are normal, just conduit binder and the proper metals. Conduit binder, however, is the problem, requiring wood pulp from forestry and CF powder from Industrial Craft 2. Thankfully, I have stone dust in droves thanks to my calculator extraction system for circuits. CF powder, wood pulp, binder composite, and conduit binder. And now we have our conduits. All the conduits are set up, all I have to do now is set them all to extract mode, which I can do more easily with a conduit probe. No change recipe this time. And I've got my conduit probe. Shift mouse wheel to switch the conduit probe from probe mode to copy and paste mode. Shift right click on a conduit to copy it. And right click on a conduit to paste the settings. So now, all the conduits are copied. All I need left is the ender chest, which should be simple, except it needs a Klein flask, which needs an ender resonator, which needs enderman heads. So to fix that, I'm going to make an ender. Good thing I already have the dark steel prepared. And I'll make an anvil to make the ender empowered. And an enchanter to enchant the ender. I'll need some quartz for sharpness. And sharpness V is mine. And with the vibrant crystal, I get an empowered ender. I'll be back once I've killed quite a few endermen. Two endermen heads for two ender chests. I'll need a slice and splice to make the ender resonators. And the two ender resonators. Notably, I made myself an experienced obelisk. That recipe wasn't changed at all. Two climb flasks. And finally, two ender chests. Lime for the melons. Hook the ender chest up, switch to insert. So many melons, but that's a good thing. For now, I'm just going to put this ender chest right next to my drawer while I set up the rest of the infrastructure. I've added another water wheel here. I need just about 90 RF per tick for this system. For now, I'm just making the refinery, squeezer, and fermenter. 20 steel scaffolding, 9 fluid pipe, 3 redstone engineering blocks, 20 iron sheet metal, 3 steel fences, 6 light engineering blocks, two heavy engineering blocks and a piston, and finally, four cauldrons and four wooden barrels. Now I've got all the machines set up in a nice, neat system. Note that you can right-click the fluid pipes with an engineer's hammer to create or destroy connections. This splitting conveyor belt splits items that go into it perfectly evenly. In this mechanical crafter from Extra Utilities 2, I have melons turning into melon seeds. It's worth noting, however, that the splitting conveyor unfortunately doesn't work very well unless it's splitting directly into two different inventories. So, here's my setup. I have a little lever here to stop a hopper that takes melons out of a drawer and puts them onto a conveyor belt. The splitting conveyor belt outputs into two hoppers. One hopper puts melons directly into the fermenter, which turns it into ethanol, and fluid pipes take out the ethanol and put it into the refinery. The other hopper puts melons into a mechanical crafter, which makes seeds, and puts them into the squeezer, and pipes take out the plant oil and put it into the refinery. Last of all, we need somewhere to put our biodiesel. 
One reason I want biodiesel is to run an excavator, which takes 4096 per tick and gets me the uranium I need for my ultimate hybrid solars. However, the excavator works by putting it into a chunk that contains, for example, a uranium vein, which means I need to move the excavator and my power gen wherever I go. To most effectively move my power gen, I just need to move the liquid. So, I'll need an ender tank. But ender tanks require, just as before, client flasks. Before I get to that part, however, I just want to note a small change in my design. I use the grated hopper from Hopper Ducks because normal hoppers pull out the melons before they turn into melon seeds. Two climb flasks, two lime ender tanks. That's one ender tank placed, but I'll be setting up the biodiesel and excavator in the next episode. Before I end the episode, however, I need to show you a big change in my design. First, I switched out the conveyors for hopper ducks because I felt that if the system got too full of seeds or melons, then my conveyors would clog up and melons would spill everywhere, which would not be a good time for anybody. I wanted to keep my splitting conveyor, however, so to save off that horrible waste, I set up a super circuit maker system to detect if the hoppers are full and send a redstone signal to the hopper to disable it. This inventory scanner works as a comparator. This constant sends out a constant signal of 238. If the inventory scanner outputs a value greater than 238, the subtractor will send it a redstone signal, and the hopper under the melon door will get disabled. And that's it for this episode. Next time, I'll assemble the actual power system and start excavating uranium. Details I left out are in the description, like the optimal water wheel setup. If you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. This is only my second video. I'm considering music and maybe an intro, so ideas are welcome for that as well. I hope you enjoyed!